The Spider-Man mod is just so much fun and definitely one of my favourite mods. Paired with Calcium City, flying around feels like living out a childhood dream. This is the best Spider-Man gaming experience I've ever played. The way you get momentum by pushing, pulling and swinging just feels so good. You can get some real speed going and it feels so exhilarating just flying around. You can set the bindings, in my case that was double pressing the grip button. You can enable the UI to show where your web will land. You can also enable high jump and super strength in the settings. There's lots of little things you can play around with. The utility gun and the sandbox element make it the best. I had a lot of fun just throwing forward and just trying to catch him in mid-air. It took some practice, but I eventually pulled it off. You can also use the Spider-Man mod in Campaign, which adds another layer onto the combat and scenarios. Just breaking out of the map and Spider-Manning around just adds this layer on top of the gameplay that you didn't previously have. You also have Spider-Man grip so you can climb up things. As you can see, I'm web swinging on the roof in one of the earlier missions. It's so cool just flying around and getting unique takedowns in the campaign. The scenarios are just set up for you. You can pull enemies towards you using the web, and you can also drop down from the roof and get surprising takedowns on them. Slide scale lets you scale things. You can turn your gun giant and surprisingly it still works. You can do the same to NPCs and other things. You create some really funny and interesting things. It's actually pretty hilarious when you start to scale objects of this size. It can start to mess around with the physics a bit though. Forward looks incredibly weird. Head crabs are even more scary when you make them giant. The camera plus mod gives you a range of controls over the spectator view. This is what the default spectator view looks like. With a simple right click, you can increase the FOV and it looks much better. You can also enable things like post-processing. As well, you can change the camera to be in third person and also adjust the X, Y and Z axis. It's incredible seeing Boneworks from these other perspectives. I had a lot of fun just creating a third person camera and playing around with the combat doing this. With some more playing around, I created something similar to a top-down view. It really gets you in the mood to make machinima videos. It just feels incredible being able to change where the camera is. Just with the click of a button, you can place the camera down, and then I can just talk to the camera like this. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you enjoy the video. I'm going this way. I placed the camera down and then overlaid my body with a green screen to create this really cool mixed reality effect. This mod paired with the camera mod is a great extension which allows you to physically hold a camera and move it around. As you can see you can sort of look under tables because I'm holding onto the camera with my hand. If Boneworks had mouth tracking and full body tracking it would be an incredible machinima tool. Entanglement allows you to play multiplayer. You can do like trick shots with the baseball bat. What's a trick shot? This is a ridiculous amount of fun. It makes the game incredible. Me and my friend were just playing around in the museum basement and I was showing him cool reload tricks. Yeah, so you have to like throw it up and then get it in while it's spinning. As well as some time trying to hit a baseball perfectly. We had a lot of fun just playing around with flashlights and it was like rediscovering the game for the first time. I hold it like a normal fucking... It's also a lot of fun playing campaign with someone and surprisingly easy to set up. You just install the mod and then create a server and then they can just join you. It reminds me of playing Halo co-op back in the day. I'd really love to see this feature inbuilt into the game, but huge props to the devs for creating this. This is a must-have mod. Force grab enemies makes it so every NPC is force grabbable. You can have a lot of fun with this creating unique and interesting scenarios.
It feels like being Darth Vader when you force choke people towards you. You can force grab people from different joints, from their elbows, arms, feet and head and lots of joints in between. It's a lot of fun throwing forward off a cliff and then bringing him back. AI Modifier allows you to customize the AI settings in an easy to use UI. It's a great tool for machinima and creating interesting scenarios. Here you can see me just playing around with a follow function and walking them off a cliff. I'm sure there's a lot of creative opportunities you can use the AI Modifier for that I haven't thought of. Combat Plus allows you to add net breaking into Boneworks. You can also adjust how much force applied will cause the net breaking. It's another great feature. You can grab Ford and then snap his neck. You can see his head dangling around. Spawn Anything allows you to add nearly any object to the spawn menu. Not every item in the campaign is spawnable from the utility gun. This mod essentially allows you to shoot something, then if it's available, the name appears next to your gun. It then appears in your utilities menu. You can get items that otherwise aren't available. For example, in the final mission in the campaign, you can grab these chairs and the tables and then you can spawn them in other maps as they appear in your utility gun. You can then break them on people. I wonder what the weirdest item you can get is. Persistent inventory gives you the ability to keep things between menus. So if you're on one map and you go to another one, the items in your inventory will stay the same. It can get really annoying respawning the same guns through each level, so this mod basically fixes that issue. Aimhacks essentially allows you to cheat in Boneworks. This is one of my favourite mods as well. This mod enables two basic things, Triggerbot and Aimbot. Triggerbot makes it so when you're aimed at an NPC's head, your gun automatically shoots without you even needing to pull the trigger. Aimbot lets you set an angle, and then if you're within that angle on an enemy, the gun will automatically aim and shoot at the NPC's head. This one is shockingly fast. Even when you just spawn in enemies, if you set the angle to around 100, it just automatically shoots them in the head straight away. I had a lot of fun playing around with this and I'm definitely gonna utilize this mod when I'm making YouTube shorts. I took it to the handgun trial and it was just incredible to watch. No Death Animation is a mod that allows you to disable the death animations that play when an NPC dies. You can also customize the muscle weight and allow for certain NPCs to play animations. This lightsaber mod lets you live out your dream of having a lightsaber in Boneworks. It comes with a range of colors you can pick from. It doesn't cut things in half at no clips through enemies, but it's a lot of fun to play around with. You can't deflect bullets as the actual light on the lightsaber is a no-clip object. But it is fun just playing around with force pulls and hearing that sound when you open it up. You can also get Kylo Ren's lightsaber. They absolutely nailed the sound on this one as well as the startup animation. Unfortunately, it is still a no-clip object. The sticky detonator lets you place down sticky bombs and then once you've placed them all down it gives you a remote. If you pull the trigger on the remote it blows up the sticky bombs. This really takes me back to the Gary's Mod days. It would be cool to balance them out evenly across something and try and get it to go as high as possible. This Apache helicopter mod lets you fly one in Boneworks. You just enter the passenger seat. Once you're in you can then just shut the door there's a lot of controls, but if you pull the lever on the side, you can then take off. You can shoot the machine gun by pulling the trigger while moving. There are a whole range of controls in the actual helicopter. You can toggle the laser sights, use the machine gun, fire missiles, and shut the door. You also have pretty accurate control over the helicopter, and I found myself actually being able to drive it around after a while. I fell out of the helicopter at some point, and then I remembered I had the Spider-Man mod enabled so I could just cause back onto it. I tried a strafe run, but I think that'll take a bit more practice. The skateboard mod brings a range of skateboard designs into the game. 
You can go down hills, attach NPCs to them. It was definitely a lot of fun. It makes me want a dedicated skateboarding VR game, but that might be a while. This Pelican mod brings a Pelican from Halo Reach into Boneworks. It comes with a fully working menu and also a toggle button to open and close the hatch on the back of the Pelican. The controls are surprisingly easy to use. The Halo music was definitely a great touch to this mod. I'm a massive Halo fan, so I'm always happy to use Halo mods in games. This mod brings a Guardian Sword and Shield into Boneworks. Breath of the Wild was one of my favourite games, so I was really excited to play this and it didn't disappoint. It just acts as a reskinned Sword and Shield. They actually glow in the dark. This mod brings Captain America's shield. It comes in a range of styles and you can pick them up and throw them really easily. It's just a reskin of the shield. This mod brings smoke grenades. I tried with the night vision goggles to see if you could see through the smoke, but you couldn't. It's perfect for some breach and clear. It just doesn't get any better than the Boneworks combat loop. This mod lets you add propulsion to anything. You can edit the force mode and change the thruster force. It's surprising how much control you can get over the cart if you play around with the settings a little bit. This is just way more fun than it has any right to be. I had an absolute blast. I tried to just record a video of me doing this and I ended up playing for about an hour. This is a teleport mod. It'll take something from the chamber one and teleport it into chamber two. It seemed to work with any item I tried it with. The dampener greatly reduces the terminal velocity of whatever it's attached to. You can attach it to forward to protect him from falling damage, attach it to a gun to greatly reduce recoil, or hold it and fall too slowly. Its uses are limitless. High stakes is a really fun run and gun parkour map. The map features a range of obstacles, things to climb up and traverse around. I spawned a bunch of null bodies and had a lot of fun just climbing around and playing with all the equipment. It has a really nice sort of lo-fi purple aesthetic as well. I was going to play this one in multiplayer and race one of my friends to the end to see who could get there first. I love the neon light aesthetic as well. I had a lot of fun just with these enemies I've spawned in and just running and gunning. This is another map that works really well in combination with the parkour mod. Kill House is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It's just a really short maze that has enemies around each corner. There's a button at the front of the map and when you push it the enemies respawn and you can just go around really quickly and shoot them all. It's kind of a breach and clear sort of map. With Super Jump, you can jump over the actual maze and do really cool trick shots. Bob OMD Battlefield is a map from Mario 64, I believe. It's just cool to see it in 3D and you can walk around and explore. Apart from the platforms that go up and down, the map isn't really interactable. Everything's a mesh object pretty much, but it's still fun to just have a look around. This 7-Eleven map has four corners around it. You can explore them and the lights look really cool. I flew around with night vision goggles as it was just too dark without them. The houses are really detailed and cool. It's dark scenes like this that make me want a real VR horror game. I just spawned some enemies around and was just playing around shooting them. And then comes the actual 7-Eleven in the middle of the map. So there's a working dart and a coffee you can drink out of. So you can have a dart and coffee at the 7-Eleven. Here's me enjoying a dart. And the 7-Eleven features full sliding doors, which took me by surprise. You can get a Slurpee and actually drink it, which blew my mind when I first tried it. So you can fill the cup all the way up and then drink the Slurpee. The same goes for the soft drink. You can actually drink it, which is incredible. 
and there's a bunch of products all along the shopping carts. You can pick them up, read them, and they're very interactable. You can play around with the physics. There's a working arcade game. You can also grab a gumball machine and watch it roll all the way down. You can even grab the gumballs and eat them. There is an elevator hidden at the back and when you push the button, it takes you all the way down. At the bottom, there's this scary room where you can see glowing eyes. And there's a room and if you go in it and press the button, you then can't spawn objects while you're in that room. I'm sure there's an easter egg where you can get out of it. I could see some hidden rooms while I was going down the elevator, so I flew into them and explored, and there's some creepy looking rooms. Calcium City is the best city map in Boneworks that I've found. The graphics are just unparalleled. It's not the biggest, but it's definitely my favourite for flying around as Spider-Man. The Calcium City night mod is just a night version of Calcium City. It's very creepy and dark at night. I just spawned some enemies, shot them, and then flew around as Spider-Man for a bit. The dev construction site is a very simple map. It just has a couple of buildings and it's fun to go around and shoot enemies. It's always fun to play around with the Boneworks physics, as well as throwing people out of windows. Arma Busk is a breach and clear type of map. You can kick down doors to kill the enemies. It really reminds me of breaching in Modern Warfare 2. The loop is fun, just running around, bashing the doors in and getting headshots. When you get to the end of the map, you can open a safe and grab the gold. The night mod is the same, it's just darker and it features zombies. It's still just as fun, it just has a much spookier vibe. And just like the daytime one, you can grab the gold. Field is just a great open area to fly aircrafts. At least that's what I use it for. This mod is directly from Gmod Construct. It should look very familiar to you. I spent a lot of hours in Gmod when I was younger. It really just acts as a great sandbox to do whatever you want. There's a big building to play around with. So of course I just had to throw some null bodies off. I then hosted a diving contest. It's cool to note the water does actually splash a little bit when you throw them in. It's a pretty cool effect. And then I jumped in just to show them how it's done. Nice pin drop, no splash. Nuketown 2025 just like it was in Call of Duty. I stopped playing Call of Duty after Modern Warfare 3, but it was pretty cool to be in Nuketown anyway. Unfortunately you can't shoot the heads off the mannequins like you can in Call of Duty, but it is what it is. The map was pretty detailed, and I was very impressed with this. It just makes me want streamlined Boneworks multiplayer that much more. Rooftops was a really cool dark, raining map just to play around with. The whole map acts as an obstacle course and you can spawn enemies and just run through it as quickly as you can. This map was just a great sandbox all around and I really enjoyed my time with it. It's nice having some abstract level design while you're playing around in the sandbox. It makes it a lot more fun. In back rooms, you just drop into the map from the top. It's just an endless loop of a mazy sort of map. It reminds me of the Triwizard Maze from Harry Potter, the Goblet of Fire. There's also some dark sections to the map and you can play around with a torch and spawning some enemies. Again, moments like this just really make me want a horror themed VR game, maybe like Dead Space in VR, although you would probably have a heart attack. I also played around spawning a lightsaber Small box is just a very simple dark map. There's a light in the middle of the map and you can fully change the color. And yeah, it's, it's really cool just getting these different lighting effects that you can't traditionally get on the standard maps. This map is just dust from Counter-Strike. I grew up playing on this map, so it's amazing seeing it in 3D. If Boneworks had built-in multiplayer and you could play Team Deathmatch, the game would just take over. The, the physics and reloading is just that good. Hopefully in Project 4 they add something like that. And I just can't resist doing some trick shots. This is Hijack from Black Ops 3. If you grew up playing Call of Duty like me, it gives you a whole new appreciation for the map. Just seeing it in 3D, being able to maneuver around is just amazing. There's nothing the Spider-Man mod won't make even better. This one's just the lobby from the Matrix movie. 
I reenacted the opening scene in a YouTube short I made a couple of weeks ago. But you can just jump into this one and reenact the opening scene in The Matrix. If I had to pick one favourite custom map, it would definitely be Playground. This map features basically everything you would want to play around with in Boneworks in one simple map. It also has the constrainer which welds objects together. And the devs have just added Tuscany to it and they're constantly adding new things. You can change the slow motion so it toggles on this map. There's also a giant hill to play around with. And there's some pre-built trolleys you can play around with as well. Here you can see me skateboarding down the giant hill, which is surprisingly easy to do. And the lighting on this map is incredible, so it's great for shooting videos. This is my go-to map when I show people Boneworks or just want to record a quick video. It also has the playground from the museum basement. Studio is a very simple map that has a white screen and really good lighting. In combination with the camera mode, you can create these really cool angles. It really looks like you're recording in a studio. If you zoom out a bit, you can see the actual studio. There's some really chill music playing as well. Again, a great map for creating machinimas. It's cool seeing me reload for another angle with perfect lighting and a blank background. I really want a map like this with a green screen. Then I'd make some mixed reality videos with Ford and me in real life. The view from the studio makes it look like you're on a space station. White box is where I imagine all the NPCs go when you kill them in the campaign. It's quite literally just an endless blank white map. And I flew around and it really does feel endless or big enough so you don't even notice that there is an end. It doesn't get much better than the lighting on this map. It's just perfect wherever you are. There's also a slight echo on this map. So when you shoot and move things, you can hear that it's a blank map. I can't resist the opportunity to do some quick trick shots. This is Woohoo Island from Wii Sports. Now I was completely blown away about just how big this map really is. It is huge. And there's lots of things you can do. You can climb up the volcano mountain, you can spider man around. This is another great map to check out. And as well, the lighting is absolutely perfect. You seem well lit almost anywhere you go. It's honestly fun to just fly around with a Nimbus gun and pretend like you're Superman. It'd be fun to get a trolley at the top of the volcano and try and ride the trolley all the way down. But in this case, it felt like I was skiing. This is just Village from Resident Evil 4. It has the same vibe of Village, something just feels off and it's very eerie. I was just playing around, shooting some enemies. These are the grunts from Amnesia. These could be paired really well with a dark map. This is one of the scariest custom NPCs I've seen. This is Ford reskinned as a soldier. I was using these when I was recreating the elevator scene in the Matrix in Boneworks. This mod gives you an NPC that can actually shoot you. I tried grabbing its gun out of its hand once I killed it, but it seemed like it was just attached to the hand. You can get head crabs in Boneworks. These are truly a gross and horrifying enemy. I played around some dark maps with the flashlight and it makes this double as scary. It's cool just seeing their limbs dangle around. I had a bit too much fun playing around with sharp objects. Anybody want a head crab kebab? How cool are the little things like this you can do in Boneworks? You can spawn the shady character model, which again looks really cool. Time to try some mixed martial arts on them in slow motion. This mod features the old crablet model. On the left, you can see the old design and on the right, you can see the new one. There's just some slight differences between the two. You can see when the old one's approaching you, its flaps come out. This is the original Boneworks zombie design. It looks a lot scarier. That raw flesh just looks a lot more unnatural.
These are the NPCs from Super Hot. They seem to shatter when you kill them. The lightsaber mod is perfect for this, because it does such a high amount of damage. And yes, they do come in red. You can bring XQC into Boneworks, and it even has some voice acting. Here we have the Gordon Freeman model from Half-Life. Didn't seem to have much health though. This brings a completely dismemberable Ford. So you can rip off all his limbs and his head, and you can even pick them up and do whatever you want with them after. And his head actually still stays alive when you rip it off. This reminds me a bit of Gorn. And of course the perfect mod to use for this is the lightsaber mod. It just takes their limbs off straight away. There are just too many Five Nights at Freddy's NPCs to put in a single video, but these are just some of the few I found. The models are actually surprisingly detailed, and you can actually sort of pick them up and maneuver them around. I've never played the game, but it was cool seeing the models anyway. I have a lot of people in the comments section that seem to be a big fan of it, and you can reach out and actually shake their hand, even with two hands into a proper handshake. Some models are a lot scarier than other ones. Look, one of them fighting with Gordon Freeman. This is Jeff from one of the scariest Half-Life Alex missions. This is the AWP from Counter-Strike, a well-detailed model with lots of grabbable points. Bolt-action guns do get tiring though. You can really feel the impact of firing a sniper rifle. It just feels powerful. This acts as a machine balloon gun. It lets you fire balloons a lot faster than the traditional method. The traditional method is a bit slow and takes ages, but this automatic one seems to be a lot better. Less time shooting balloons and more time playing around with things that have been shot in by balloons. Here's a banana gun in Boneworks. It has a really relaxing sound. Definitely prefer it to the sound of a gun. It just seems oddly comedic as well. Here we have the C1911. It comes in both the silent and normal variant. The normal variant has a lot more punchier sound. The silent variant has a much cooler sound, I think. I had a bit of a play around shooting kneecaps with it and then finishing them off with a knife. This is a crossbow. It comes in blue, red, and a black color. Very satisfying pulling it back and then you can pull the trigger and it does a lot of damage. This is the Desert Eagle. Out of all the guns I've fired, it definitely packs the most punch. It just feels amazing. It just has so much power when the bullets impact on things. This is a grenade revolver. Just as it sounds, it shoots grenades from a pistol like gun. It's great just seeing the force impact of the explosion on the objects around them. It works really well with a physics based game in Boneworks. You can also rocket jump really easily with this gun. I'm a massive Halo fan and this mod brings a whole range of Halo guns into the game. From the DMR, you can reload it just like you would in Halo Reach. And it comes with all the original sound effects. It also includes the battle rifle. Oh, how good is that three burst sound? Here we have the pistols. Nothing better than seeing things from my favorite childhood game in 3D and getting to use them. And here we have the pistol with an inbuilt laser. Lasers on VR guns just make your accuracy so much better. And the classic Halo Assault Rifle. Some of the guns come with inbuilt flashlights. The flashlight looks a lot better when you're actually in the VR headset.
And here we have the traditional SMG. Very satisfying sound. And of course the Covenant Carbine. Another amazing one to see in VR with, with its own custom reload animations. And here we have the beam rifle, which doesn't seem to require reloading. This gives me PTSD from the Jackal Snipers. And of course the classic Halo Sniper. The attention to detail in this mod is just incredible. And the energy sword. I tried mimicking some of the classic animations. And of course, the gravity hammer. Kills enemies pretty quickly. Here we have the ray guns from COD Zombies. I had to take these into the zombie warehouse to test them out. They're a lot of fun, but definitely OP for this game mode. Here we have the HK416, which has one of the most satisfying gun sounds I've heard so far. It has such little recoil, it's an incredible gun to shoot. Here we have the original MK18 design, which can be seen on the original Boneworks poster. I do personally prefer the newer design though. And here we have the laser gun, which just seems to shoot a laser and has a really weird design. And here we have the cool ass minigun, which is a giant machine gun. And here we have a pump action shotgun. It comes in three variants. The first one just blows confetti all over the place. And the second one acts like an actual pump action shotgun. And the third one is just a silenced version of the normal pump action. Time for some breach and clear. The medieval items pack brings a whole range of medieval swords into the game. And you just can't beat swords in Boneworks. The Uwu gun pack brings a whole range of anime themed guns. I'd say I'm the furthest thing from a weeb, but the skins do look cool, I guess. And it's always just good having more guns in Boneworks. This ump just reminds me of Modern Warfare 2. Here's a gun from Half-Life Alex. You can have the stock gun and the fully upgraded gun. The developer absolutely nailed this one. All the sounds are the same, even the way you grip ammo is the same. The attention to detail is next level. I use the custom headcrab NPC mod just to add to the experience. The current bit comes in a range of colors such as Dark Knight and Golden Fang. They also spark. I have a feeling I'm using these wrong. This Minecraft pack comes with a range of things from Minecraft. You can spawn in those dirt blocks as well as get some of the basic tools going. I played a lot of Minecraft when I was younger, so it's great to have this in Boneworks. The Modern Warfare Variety Pack is a whole range of custom guns from Modern Warfare 2019. It comes fully equipped with custom sounds. It features a CX-9 submachine gun, an AK-74U, a SCAR-H, the 
The attention to detail and the little writing you can see on the guns is amazing. A CR-56 Definitely check this one out. And Farah's AK-47, also known as Revolution. The MK2 lever action comes in two variants. One without a scope. And one with a scope. It took me a while to work out how to actually use this gun. And I still think I'm doing it wrong. Here we have the Spectre. This reminds me a lot of Black Ops 1. Guns with very little recoil in VR are so satisfying. Here we have a Taser gun. This one has an oddly satisfying sound effect. Here we have the Gravity gun. This is just a reskin of the dev manipulator. The more and more I play this game, the more I think this is what Half-Life Alex should have been. This is the thermal katana from Cyberpunk. It's just a reskin of the Boneworks katana, but it's cool to just have a glowing sword in Boneworks. These are just a set of ice picks. You can use them for whatever you want. And this is a Thompson. It reminds me of Black Ops Zombies on Eyes. And this is a TMP. And this is Thor's hammer. No matter how far away you throw it, it can still come back to you. The trip mines you just place down and then activate them by clicking the trigger on the top. And then you activate a tripwire and if anything goes through that tripwire, the trip mine will explode. Pretty self-explanatory, but these are exploding barrels. So you just shoot them, they go on fire, and then they explode. Here we have the Black Mesa suit from Half-Life. CJ from GTA San Andreas. And here's the Tony Stark Spider-Man suit. Again, once you're in that Spider-Man suit, you just can't resist trying to fly around and grab onto things. This is the web Spider-Man suit from Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire. And here's another Spider-Man character model. This is a Deadpool skin. Here we have Ghost from Modern Warfare. Here we have Master Chief's model from Halo Infinite. It also comes in red and blue. Here we have another Master Chief model. These are the Nux hands from Valve's The Lab. It makes me wonder about an alternate universe where maybe Boneworks just had floating hands. I'm glad they don't though. It still is cool just to have hands in VR. It feels a lot lighter. Your arms are still physical objects though. They just go invisible. Here we have the character model from Resident Evil. No face, but you can just see your teeth, which is a little bit creepy. The hands aren't the best on this one either. 
they're really clunky, but you can still use them really well. This is my favorite player model. It's just forward, but with short sleeves. It just feels a lot more natural seeing your actual forearms in the game. I can't really describe it. This is my daily driver skin. And this just turns into a skeleton. It reminds me of the hand physics lab on the Quest 2. And here we have the basic CSGO hands and gloves. The character model from Squid Game. A lot of little details in this one, I thought it was really cool. And this is the Universe Ford, which is like that Fortnite skin. And it comes with Solar Ford as well, so it's a very similar skin. You just have this pattern, you just have this solar pattern going around your full body. Pretty cool. And here we have an Australian soldier from Modern Warfare. This is the closest thing I'm getting to an Australia skin. If I missed out on any of your favorite mods, let me know which ones below and I'll check them out. A massive shout out to the amazing modding community. I wouldn't be able to make this video without them. Since my last video, 8 1k subs. I can't thank you guys enough.